Well, the first one we put down was if there is a risk-off event, and one of those risks-off risks, I suppose, is that this is going to be a really close election, and we may actually have a legal challenge, which then could potentially run into the debt ceiling come the uh, early March next year. So that's one thing we're thinking about. So it's not just about the election; it's also looking through to the risks on the other side. And what we have seen is that credits had a really good run, and it's relatively tight credit spreads. So if you were considering a risk-off positioning or a tail hedge, taking some protection or buying some protection on credit derivatives makes a lot of sense to us today. And is there a particular index that you're looking at? Asian eye tracks in our part of the world is probably the most liquid and one of the easiest ways with a basket of securities to take advantage of that and buy into some credit protection there. Okay, so this is basically if you think that it's going to be close or if, if you're anticipating a Trump victory. So this is really a bearish product. It's a bearish product if you want to express it that way. And on top of that, because credit spreads have been rallying so hard recently, you're not putting a lot at risk here because we're just off our all-time tights. Okay, now in terms of currencies, um, you've got um, the Japanese yen as a safe haven risk asset and, and you're going long on that, is that right? Yeah, well, the, the natural one that everybody's been using is the Mexican peso, but the volatility's been so high recently, it's making it really hard to express in options market. So looking at the Japanese yen, it's been a safe haven trade. Uh, we saw it rally the last few days and then it's popped back and sold off now. Guess what? This feels remi very, very reminiscent of what we saw going into Brexit. We saw some sell-off and then we saw a big rally on the last couple of days. Um, so this is one way that you can express a bearish view uh, should the market take it in that direction. Uh, Hayden, let me um, pose a different question with the, with the yen. In advance of December in the Fed meeting, would you still hold that position or would, it be, uh, would the yen be just more of a, a short-term trade? Look, you've got to take everything day by day here. So everything's very, very short term if you're looking at Japanese yen. We've seen the way it's been moving around in the last few days. So let's get through the election. Let's get some more data. And then I think we'll see the probability of a rate hike really start to ramp up. Uh, we've got the, the warning from the last FOMC that it's basically baked in the cake. And then the probabilities will rise. I think the market, though, is thinking beyond that right now. And they're looking to still see is there going to be any other uh, rate hikes coming in the first quarter or second quarter of next year. All right, and Hayden, what's your third pick for TriFactor? Well, um, you know, it's mainly around long bonds in Asia. So what we have had with all bond markets is a bit of a sell-off here. And we would look at those bond markets within Asia that are tightly aligned to the U.S. or more developed market bonds and have less credit characteristics. So in that space, we've got uh, the Korean market, we've got uh, Singapore, um, we look at Australian bonds. Uh, those type of markets, when you put them together, act like US Treasury. So should we have a risk-off event here, most likely long bonds are going to start to rally again. And we'll see some capital appreciation.